Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to this session, uh, Karta. I am Raj Lunia uh, from eBay, and uh, my colleague here, Gurpreet Singh, will be talking about Karta, uh, which is uh, an ETL framework we developed at eBay. Karta, as many of you might know and many of you might not know, is a, a word derived out of Sanskrit, which means the doer. So what we are going to cover today is basically um, the challenges we had and what we were trying to solve using Karta. We will go into what Karta is, uh, what it does. And then we will go into as any kind of an ETL um, tool or an engine uh, provides different flows. So does Karta. Karta has few flows uh, that we'll walk you guys through. And we will uh, look into how we integrate uh, metadata um, in Karta and how it helped us uh, come over the challenges that we started with. And we'll look at some usage statistics, some run statistics, uh, utilizing Karta as an ETL framework, and we'll conclude. So looking at the challenges, what um, the, the biggest challenge, if you look at the statistics here, although the numbers are not a huge scale here, but uh, initial uh, data, what we were talking about, like 1.3 billion records, um, with 2.5 terabytes initially, but if you look at the incremental growth, uh, 400 million records um, on a daily basis, which is like one third of the original volume. So the amount of data that is being processed is huge, and we had strict SLAs to meet. Um, complexity that was involved as part of the challenge was uh, basically uh, denormalized data with 26 plus, 2600 plus columns which uh, many of the uh, databases are, have limitation and ETL tools have limitations of processing that uh, wide of a file having so many columns. We were required to normalize that data into like uh, 22 plus um, uh, normalized table structures. Another challenge, we had to uh, maintain versioning around the data, versioning being very uh, similar to uh, slowly changing dimension, if you're familiar with part of the data warehousing world. And a lot of compu uh, custom computation involved. The custom computation uh, meaning like uh, uh, encryption of data, decryption of data, um, MD5 calculations on the fly as well, so on and so forth. Another, like any other challenge for with any other projects, do it now, I need it tomorrow or yesterday, rather. And uh, there were a lot of downstreams waiting on the data that was uh, supposed to be processed as part of this project. The engineers that were part of the project were kind of uh, from a conventional ETL shop. They had a lot of data integration background and data engineering background, but not a lot of uh, Hadoop skills. They were able to do a uh, uh, high level, like a very easy map to use jobs and our hive queries, but it, when it comes to the complexity that is involved in transformation and actually error handling and a lot of other stuff that goes around any kind of an ETL tool, it was not that easy and, uh, as uh, part of the delivery is so the timelines were uh, very tight. And we also force, uh, we could foresee a lot of uh, future growth uh, in the utilization of this ETL tool. Um, and plus the data growth, the data volume that we were trying to process. So what we had, uh, Karta, was to our SQ. Um, what is Karta? So Karta is basically an ETL framework um, to do ETL on Hadoop. It was based on cascading, which is from Concurrent Inc. Uh, open source cascading, um, it was built on top of it, utilizing the features that cascading provides. It is configuration driven. Um, it's, uh, uh, the jobs are very really easy to configure and it's all XML based. And um, metadata is one of the biggest integration as part of uh, Karta, where um, 
metadata in XML and some POJO objects were easily integrated, which Gurpreet will give a little bit detail on as we go along. As far as the productivity is concerned, um, so that one of the challenges was uh, to actually uh, transform the data and do a complex uh, transformation around encryption of data, decryption of data, and uh, MD5 calculations. So what we had was we uh, integrated Karta with external jars. Basically, you have your own jar developed outside which provides some kind of functionality. You bring it in, integrate it with Karta, and boom, it's ready to go, ready to use. Of course, redu reducing time to market, which was one of the biggest challenges we had uh, as part of the deliverable. And we built reusable flows. We'll go into the flows in more detail. Uh, Gurpreet will walk us through those. Kartat as an ETL framework, since it's XML driven, it's uh, metadata uh, integrated, it's easy to learn. And uh, the, um, uh, you need very basic Hadoop skills um, to actually uh, perform any kind of ETL um, using Karta. So with that, I'll hand it over to Gurpreet, uh, who will walk us through the flows that are part of Karta. Thanks, Raj. So, so when Raj came to me to develop Karta, uh, he wanted to have a very reusable sort of ETL framework. And my first question to him was, why cascading? I have Hive, I have Pig, I have everything actually. And uh, probably it's very easy for us to do work using already pre-tested technologies like that. So, But when we sat down and we discussed things in detail, so we saw a vision actually that uh, we did have, we do have many ETL tools in market, right? And none of them support Hadoop out of the box. There are some that support Hadoop out of the box, but they are all commercial tools. Sorry. So what we thought was, let's come up with a, a framework where we give essential functionality to our developers who are not very conversant with Hadoop. And uh, the functionality should be such that it's easily extendable. So tomorrow, if we decide that something else is going to come up, we should be able to easily extend it. So we narrowed down to around five, six categories. So those categories were copy. So copy, in its essence, is a very simple thing, right? So you move data from one directory to the other directory. But in case of Hadoop, copy can have many ramifications. Copy can be from one type of data format to other type of data format, from text to sequence, or from text to sequence block compressed, or other formats, right? Then each of these flows should support certain generic functionality. Apart from ETL transformation they are doing, they should be able to support additional functionality which are consistent between each one of them. So we'll go over those functionalities in the next slide. So the next one was join. So join should be supported, and all sort of joins should be supported, actually. So these are, this is an ETL operation that everybody needs from day to day. Now transpose and versioning were required for the job at hand, the project that we had. But we foresee that going down the line, these will be required a lot, especially in case of versioning, if you have to record the historical changes to the data set based upon certain key value, then versioning is something that we are reusing a lot actually at eBay. Right, and transpose from its column to row normalization, so pivoting on that, so yeah, we have used transpose a lot to process the external data sets, and we'll, we'll discuss all these. Difference, diff calculation in Hadoop is, is difficult, <coughs> excuse me. So we came up with a diff, uh, a difference flow. Aggregator is in the beta testing right now, so basically what it does is on a particular key, it, it can group the data up. So these are the flow components that we have. 
So for each flow, let's say each, a copy or an inner join or, or a join or version or anything, the first thing is we support pre-processing, right? So pre-processing is you get a data set, then you have to do certain, it's a typical ETL functionality, right? So you have to do certain operation, like look, move the data from local to HDFS or do some script execution before you actually start processing the data. So you can do that. The second one is where you actually first perform the flow. And then what you can do is you can add additional columns. So let's say you've included, you've created a jar for some XYZ project in, uh, in the past. And there is a, a function there called MD5. Let's say you want to compute MD5 from it. So what you can do is you can include that jar, do some custom calculation, and include a new column in your data set, right? Or you can do some mathematical operation on two columns that are already present and include them as a new column. Yeah. The third one is, <clears throat> excuse me, once you have decided that, okay, these columns are going to get added, the final results set should have only certain set of columns that you would like to emit out. So there you can retain the columns. Finally, before you emit out the entire column set, you can do additional operation like encryption or decryption of the data and any other additional operation that you would like to perform after that, right? Once your final data set is ready, then Karta gives you an opportunity of deduplifying the data. So it's basically group by and sort by on a particular key set, and then it takes the max value, basically. The first row is retained. And we'll see that, how it's done. The, the final pro part is the post-processing where you can move the files, you can union the files from one directory to the other and create a history sort of, and then you can do some housekeeping stuff as you want. So ETL process. So during the course of Karta's execution, what we found was this was a typical ETL change that we used. And we'll concentrate just on the flows here. So we get the data set and we copy it into a different format. And in turn, we add a column and we do a format change. So text to sequence or Avro as, as I said. The next one is you transpose certain data set. So you decide that, okay, this, this is the key value and these columns belong to, let's say, books category, these columns belong to clothing category, or these columns belong to some other sporting good category, and you would like to transpose the rows, a row normalize the data, actually. So once you have the result set from there, you would like to join on certain key values. And finally, you would like to compute the version. So version, as, as we discussed, was basically on a certain key value. If any of the attributes have changed, you update the version. If the, if, the, if the row key value is not present, then it's a new row, actually. So this is an example of copy. A very, very simple thing. If you see the theme here is we wanted to keep it as simple as possible for the developers who are not conversant with Hadoop to work on Hadoop, right? So in this particular case, we have the input data set and we're dropping few columns. Let's say city and zip code are being dropped, and a new column like create date is being added. Now, how do we do it, right? So the XML, if you see, is very simple here. So this is the entire Karta's XML. So in the first line, if you see, we are adding the jars that you want, and this can be a custom jar. Then you can add the table. Basically, this is the metadata that's defined. You enter the metadata here. If the output table name is specified, then you don't have to give the output columns at all. It's very intuitive, right? Input directory, output directory, boilerplate. And then where conditions, right? So in this particular case, I would like to filter out the records where zip code is null. So it's very simple, very intuitive, right? And then out here, I'm adding a new column, create date, and then deduplifying my data. So this, if you see, this is the entire XML that be, for any of the flows will be configured. It will be pretty much similar to this, and we'll go over that. And if you see the final directory, this is the error directory, where, you, where the records that don't conform to the schema will be emitted. So let's go. 
And this is just a highlight of, so we have, for the same uh, copy condition, so this is a where condition, and then the output columns, the new column that is being added, and deduplication here. So very simple up till here. And this is the case for transpose. So if you see here, we have two types of columns, cat1, cat2. Cat1 belongs to book, and cat2 belongs to clothes. And we would like to transpose this data like this out here. And the code, if we have to do this repeatedly, and you have to create the jar, it takes a lot of time, right? So all you have to do is, for Karta, this is the XML. So you give your key columns out here. You give the transpose header, types, bits, and this is a type of dot. It should be a comma. Type, bits, and sale. And then you specify the columns here. That's pretty much it. And this, if you see, was used, and we'll go over the usage and starts in the rest of the slide. It was used heavily. And this is a typical join operation. If you see in this join operation, we are dropping certain set of columns, and then we are adding a new column, MD5. Again, how it's done, from the, from the code perspective, very simple and intuitive. You specify the left join column, right join column, and the output columns on the left side. If, let's say, we have the output columns on the right side, if they're not specified, then the output columns, all the columns are emitted out. Again, uh, it's not highlighted, but this is how you add a new column. This is MD5 computation, and that's pretty much it, actually. So again, if you see the theme that we started with, that it should be very simple for a, for a person who are not accustomed to Java development or who are not accustomed to Hadoop, per se. They should be able, rapidly able to adopt to, to this form of development and produce results. And this is what we have seen, what actually happened in eBay also. Now, this is another set of complex, cal I'll say complex calculation on Hadoop, where we are performing data versioning. In this particular case, these are my, these are my keys, customer ID and property. And then customer ID, property type, first name, and all that. And then what I would like to do is I would like to see if any of the attributes associated to them has changed. If yes, then. Increment the version if the property, if the key is not present, then insert a new row. Again, the code to do that, very simple. So you specify this is my version column. These are the join columns that I want. In this particular case, we give another functionality where you can ignore a column in, compar in comparing the two data sets. So very simple and very intuitive for any person here to do this. Now let's go over how it's invoked. This is quite boilerplate. So you specify the input file, the config file that we saw. Now see, in this particular case, what you can do is, let's say many, many times you would like to actually dynamically put the directories. You would like to change the directories every day based upon the date column, right? So what you can do is you can specify a regular expression saying that my regular expression in this particular case from f u or w should be substituted with this particular value here. So it does that. So before it runs, it will substitute the, these values in the XML file, and then it will invoke the rest of the processing. And this, is, this was the entire thing that folks who were not conversant with Hadoop had to learn. Like how many reducers, what? Hadoop environment variables they have to set. So in this particular particular case, where was number of the number of reducers, we ran into scenarios where speculative execution should be turned on, all those kind of things. And this was pretty easy for them to do actually. So now let's talk about the metadata support. So metadata support into cascading was already being worked on by another team in eBay. And we, had, we were fortunate enough to reuse it in Karta. And this really helped us a lot, because what happened was, for Karta, once architects actually they developed the schema that they wanted, we were able to convert that schema directly into the POJO classes using automated procedures. And 
integrated into Kartha. Now what that gave us, that enabled error handling. Now error handling proved to be very, very, very critical because if let's say there was a column which was non-nullable in the schema and it was coming as null, so it was emitted out to the error directory. Similarly, all those kind of checks were enabled because of this error handling. And our consensus is that as we enhance our schema capabilities and all this, this, this will also grow actually. So. Now on the usage side, if you see, we started on this, I think probably around last August or so, and there has been one person working on it, and mostly they spent around one to two months actually, I think, on this entire stuff, configuring the flows. And we have been able to configure 175 plus flows, and one ETL developer full time, and one on partial basis have been used. And if you see, mostly it's been copy, join, transpose, and versioning actually. And the best part is many, of, many, of, uh, many times when we are doing the analysis on ad hoc basis, if you want to do something, you can just plug in the schema and plug in the values and then you can actually run and get the results. So it's been beneficial in that aspect. On the statistics side, if you see, I won't say the performance has been great because one of our requirement was batch processing to meet our SLAs. And with Karta, all the time we have met the SLAs. So if you see performance has been pretty consistent. This data set was taken from another project that we implemented Karta for, for join. The data set has grown from 100 GB to around 250 GB and the performance has been consistent enough. So on the conclusion side, so I understand that uh, Karta has lots of potential actually to us and to eBay, but it's a long way ahead. Uh, we have to work on a lot of stuff, we have to harden it. Uh, but let's take a look at how the challenges that we initially stated at the beginning of this presentation were met by Karta, right? So large data set, so we had large data set and many a times what happened was that there were issues with the files that were sent across from the vendor and we had to reload the data sets again, right? So I won't say that it's a very difficult process, to do, difficult thing to do, but it's, 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 it has a lot of hassles in it. it. It burns you out, it burns the team out, right? So, but with Karta, the process is so easy to rerun and everything that we have seen minimal issues so far actually from that perspective. So we have been able to meet all our SLAs actually and we have seen minimal issues even for reloading the data and all those kind of stuff. On the complexity side, so we, we saw that we have 2600 columns in one data set, we have 1300 in other data set and so we estimated it's going to take us this amount of time to do, do, to do all this, right? Normalization, versioning, and all that. With Karta, uh, basically one of the output was that folks were able to automate the XML generation to a certain extent, and uh, all that complexity was very easily handled. And that meant that we spent more time on testing and verification activities. So that, that was a very good byproduct here. So from the timeline perspective, thank God we were saved actually. So it's, uh, it was an on-time delivery. And uh, yeah, we were, we were pretty happy with it. On the skill set side, yeah, initially when we started, folks were learning Java, not much Java experience, very conversant with shell scripting, ab initio, and all their RDBMS skill sets. But so success, with their success in Karta by implementing all these flows and working with it and uh, running a lot of hype queries to actually verify the result sets and all those during the testing phase, it, it gave them this confidence that moving, out, moving down to Hadoop is not difficult at all. So folks, they easily moved down and basically now they're working full time actually on Java development and MapReduce development and all those other kind of stuff. So 
in a sense, that helped us basically to abridge the skill, uh, skill gap in, uh, even after having a conventional ETL shop. On the future growth, actually, we have reused Karta, as I said, on ad hoc basis and other projects, actually, that we have got, and mostly for history computation, actually. So if, uh, as I said, in versioning case, if you have to keep the history of anything, if it has changed. So uh, we have re reused that functionality a lot, actually, at other places. So that's pretty much it on Karta. So any questions? There are two mics here, so you can come in. Um, if there are new columns in your schema, um, so would you have to go and update the XML, or do you, is your code generation handling? Let's say you want to create a new version based on yeah, yeah, the code generation, new columns. Yeah, okay. code generation will handle that, actually. Okay. So, yeah. And that can be integrated into the. So is that an automated process, or that's um, you actually go and you know that this is going to happen, and then you go and hit a button? Is that? Yeah, the thing is, right now it's not automated, but as part of next steps in Karta, those are the things that we are thinking about actually to make it fully automated on these okay. lines. Yeah, thank you. Are you guys using Amazon Cloud, or this is entirely on? The reason I ask that is, so um, mostly we use AWS Data Pipeline, and uh, I want to know how Karta fix, uh, would it even fit within that uh, AWS? Data Pipeline is really a workflow, uh, so uh, I think it should. And uh, the one thing, it's uh, Karta seems to be very appealing, we have similar situation. So most of the ETL people are informatica expertise exactly. or SSI, SSIS expertise. Uh, so uh, and we have a huge uh, uh, developers in that. So we want to definitely also move in this direction. So we have the same struggle. So would Karta the key problem will it solve? Would is that uh, that skill set problem? Uh, and can I, uh, if yes, can it fit into existing framework like data pipeline and stuff like that? Yeah, I'll take the first one, and then probably Raj, you can talk on the second one on the. Uh, so f on the Amazon, it, uh, this works on eBay's internal cluster, and uh, on the data pipeline, um, AWS data pipeline, I'm not aware of that, but uh, I think if it's a workflow, that's the direction where we are planning to take Karta to. So maybe with the front end and everything, you can just click and uh, drag and drop stuff or maybe through other process you can automatically generate the XMLs and all those kind of stuff. So trying to integrate it with, the, um, let's say, the designers. Once they design the schema and come up with low situation and everything, then you should be able to click a button and then that's it, your XMLs are generated and uh, maybe deployed also, so something like that. Yeah. No, it's not UI based right now, but we have to make it UI based actually before. So and yeah, that's uh, basically part of the hardening of the process. I mean, uh, we started developing this uh, mid last year, and we kind of implemented this in that August time frame, and we've been using it. Um, so there are still there's still work to be done to harden the actual framework and utilize it. Um, we haven't uh, thought about making it available for open source yet because it's not at the maturity level where we would want it to be, like having a GUI front end or actually um, uh, actually having hardening and more supporting more flows. But the key things that uh, I felt as uh, my team was uh, really happy with was the kind of functionality that we were looking for which is not that easy to integrate with any kind of a MapReduce or a, a high flow. Given that um, a simple minus or a diff operation with a hive, you actually have uh, the minus is not supported as such in uh, hive, and you actually have to do the join and do the. Um, so it's, it's a lot of coding that was eliminated as part of this. So, yeah, we're uh, looking forward to it, but uh, we don't know the timelines yet.
Yeah, uh, the question I have is, you know, uh, you have an ETL system here, and uh, it basically, uh, it acts when the input data is available. Um, what kind of event or triggering mechanism do you have in place for this to run automatically? You'll take that? I'll. So this is uh, completely batch uh, dependent. Uh, right now it is run command line. Um, so you can have any scheduler uh, schedule this kind of jobs. Um, we do not have it run event based yet, but I cannot see why it cannot be done. Uh, yeah, thanks. So uh, one thing that uh, I don't think we mentioned here is the, as part of the ETL, this was majorly, majority of it is transformation. The extraction and the load part is something we are working on. We are trying to um, use the connectors that are provided by uh, cascading, which is the underlying framework of Karta, and also have some other in-house built frameworks be connected with Karta that are like a, uh, eBay heavily uses Teradata. And there's a bridge between Hadoop and Teradata to pull and push data around. So we are trying to integrate that as well as part of our next version that is in our plans. But to your answer your question, majority of the work that is done here is transformation and uh, normalization of data. When the data lands in Hadoop, the files are pushed, FTP or SFTP, whatnot, they're pushed into Hadoop, it lands in there, it, the output is available in Hadoop for consumption, and what we do is we also push that output into Teradata, but we utilize uh, another framework that we have at eBay uh, to load the data to the target systems as well. So yeah. the data you were working on here is in landed on Hadoop. In HDFS. Right, HDFS. And that's part of pre-processing also, so if it's on local system, you can move it to HDFS actually. Yeah, the choosing of cascading was, uh, what we found was initially it was, you can say one of the reason was it was driven by a skill set and the, some work that had been done in eBay also at that time. So we know that uh, certain aspect of metadata integration was already there. And uh, considering the timeline actually we thought it's I th uh, we believe that it was the best strategy to go ahead and develop something on top of it. But as we go along, we are thinking of uh, keeping the interface same, but considering the possibility of moving it to other technologies, maybe like Spark or something else actually. So basically, currently it is tightly coupled with cascading and yeah. we're trying to yeah. decouple it. And uh, as Gurpreet mentioned, it, uh, we leveraged uh, work that was already done um, at eBay, utilizing cascading. There was uh, some high-level work done and we um, built on it. Yeah. Good, good question, actually. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks for coming. Thanks a lot.